When it comes down to things we wish we could do in our first car, drifting is likely among the top of the list. I mean, let's face it, you remember your front wheel drive Corolla with the e-brake and the automatic, and you go on lunch break in January and drift your car around some high school neighborhood streets. Drifting your car is just a thing I think everyone wants to do with their car. It's for good reason. It's fun. It's loud. It's ridiculous. What else could you want to do in a car when you're 16 years old or 36 years old? It doesn't even matter. I mean, what other reason could you possibly have when it comes down to owning a car? Lighting up a set of tires puts a smile on your face from ear to ear that is just hard to match and pretty much anything else when it comes to the automotive sport. I'm Alex, Alex at FI on the Insta page, and today we're gonna to be talking about you wanting to drift your car. Here, don't forget to subscribe so we can take the YouTube algorithm into our own hands. And you can watch our videos when they drop because we need you. Anyway, if that's not enough, don't forget to check out fitmentindustries.com if you're looking for aftermarket wheels, aftermarket tires, or aftermarket suspension. You know, for the drift missile you're looking to build or the Corolla you plan on tossing around through the high school parking lot. We don't judge. Just don't do it next to people, because then if you run into somebody, there's this thing called insurance, and then that hurts people, then occasionally sometimes people don't like when you run over their children. Taking it back a few decades, drifting wasn't known like it was today, as drifting was often associated with lack of control and failure to enter and exit turns appropriately in the world of racing. Boo! Then, a man by the name of Kunimitsu Takahashi came in, in his Skyline KPGC 10, and decided to just, just, all over the competition. Originally in the motorcycle racing scene, Takahashi ended up jumping into the automotive scene due to an accident in his motorcycle career. As he entered into everything from GT2 to Formula One, there's one technique he used continuously to beat out the competition. Drifting! To combat some grip issues with bias ply racing tires at the time and inclement weather, Takahashi would approach turns at an insane speed, send it into his slide with a little bit of throttle control, a little, little tiddly bit with the little toe, the little sponge rubbing, the little and then power out onto the straights. For the racing category he was in, it would launch him to the first place because he'd be like, oh hey, what's up guys? How's it going? And people just could not figure out what the hell was even going on because it was just not something people really did that much of. Now, fast forward and the Japanese racing scene in the mountains began to become inspired by that whole racing style, finding that they too could accomplish quicker times by maximizing a controlled oversteer through the Touge setting. Touge. Toge. Illegal, but hey, f it. One of the individuals to take most notice of this new style was a young, nimble, lack of facial hair, Kaichi, to, uh, Kaichi Tushuya. I'm gonna get that right. Kaichi Tushuya. Oh my god. Nani? Kaichi Tushuya, also known as the <clears throat> Drift King. You know what DK stands for? Donkey Kong. Drift King. Started to popularize the sport way back in the mid 1980s through the nighttime street racing. Now, Tushia wasn't the first drifter, nor was he always the most popular, but he did hit the market at the time that people wanted to know just what drifting was. And he was dangerously good at it, with nothing more than his 1986 Toyota Sprinter. Over time, Tushia began to climb out of the illegal night racing and began to even step foot into official events like the Fuji Freshman Race and the Japan Touring Car Championship. And oh boy, their bud was he just uh, good, all right? By the way, I'm trying my best with the name, but I'm a little, 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 little backed up. Haven't had coffee yet, I'm trying my best. So, he was so good that the initial D like anime was based off his persona and the climb to the top of the racing scene as a whole. Drifting would eventually creep into its own event in the mid 1980s, powered by Tushia and the local tuning magazines of the time. And like a proper plant that needs to get the adequate amount of water and sunlight, it began to grow. 
began to get nurtured and taken care of. Put a little bit of fertilizer in there and you're ready to rock and roll. The sport in Japan skyrocketed in popularity leading up to professional grand championship events occurring in the late 90s and early 2000s. Instead of it being a rambunctious group of random people just sending it through these back road hillsides, these events began to churn out professional drifting teams, styles, and media coverages. All of a sudden, people were actually making it into an art and a craft, building cars specifically for drifting and nothing more. Just like everything cool, USA began to take notice as the Japanese grassroots drifting was starting to get all up to speed and eventually the drifting idea had hit the shores of the good old United States of America. Transition. So there's your history about actually drifting your car, but what about, uh, you know, actually wanting to drift your car? That's a fantastic question there, guy. Drifting your car is more than just throwing lunch trays under your rear wheels and sending it in the snow. It's a craft, okay? Uh, it's like making the perfect risotto. You just, you gotta know what you're doing. Or like making a perfect Funfetti cupcake. So let's start with the essentials. If you're looking to drift your car, it's important to know what you'll want to expect when you start tossing your car around like a dirty shirt in a hamper. It's gonna take a lot of abuse, at least initially, because you have no idea what you're doing. Most individuals that jump into drifting end up buying a secondary. This is important. Not their only car, but a secondary car. Because if you use your only vehicle, you're a dangerous soul. <laughs> Drifting your car out of the gate actually doesn't require too much. Simply funds to support your car when it inevitably breaks or when you begin to truly shear off tires. Individuals will jump into cheap 240SXs as if that's actually even a thing, I don't even know why I said it, 350Zs, 370Zs, 3 Series, Miatas, and more just to get a start with some sort of rear-wheel drive car with an e-brake. Now, you're gonna wanna keep an eye out if you're looking to buy a secondary car that has an LSD, if you can, because it's gonna make your life just a little bit easier. If you wanna weld your open diff, you definitely can. It can just be more of a pain over time, especially as it begins to break over and over and over again, and then when you go to turn into a parking lot, you're that guy with the little, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. If you know what a welded diff sounds like. Once you've picked the car you want and you've got the cash saved up for the repairs, going out there is the next most important thing. We've talked about this before, but simply just going for ride-alongs, getting involved in the local forums and practicing are gonna be your best and fastest way to get good at drifting. A lot of times, if you wanna be good at something, you should probably go hang out with the people that actually do it and are pretty good at it. It's gonna give you the best chance of success, all right? But you should expect a few <clears throat> hiccups along the way. So you want to drift your car. Well, grab your Nankangs and XXRs because it's about to get loud. Drifting your car will involve you being okay with doing everything to your car that it's not inherently really gonna feel like it's supposed to do unless you actually build a drift car. You will break things. You will spend lots of money. Your car will get damaged. You will spend a ton of time on your car for only to break when you take it back out on the first hard turn. And you're gonna have to be okay with that because drifting is neat. You're gonna spend quite a chunk of change on weekend events, but that's okay because drifting is neat. The biggest misconception people have about drifting is that they either need to have a fully built drift car machine, a million dollars, or all the time in the world to actually go and do it. It's a lot like autocross, actually. If you just know that the event is going on and you have a car you think you can swing around, you can probably go out there and just go send it, bud. You will want some spare change for sure, and the car you'll want to own is something that can get rear wheel drive happy with minimal modifications. But you don't need to completely dedicate your life to it, you'll just want to after you start jumping out on that track and going every other way except straight. When looking to build up your potential drift machine, you'll more than likely see people running affordable style wheels versus the super expensive multi-piece or forged monoblocks and things like that because they usually just end up kissing walls every once in a while. XXRs, Odd Hans, and JNCs will be more common than you think. However, more and more people are going more towards the sport compact wheel styles like Cosmos Racing, Koenig, and NK do their costs coming down quite a bit in comparison to what they used to be. Plus, you get full form wheels at a pretty decent price. Koenig is like on top of this right now. Tires, pff, 
Whatever fits and whatever is cheapest will reign king for the most part, but if you're looking to dial in a proper tire, you'll see Atsus and Nankangs everywhere. Federals have gotten more popular in time due to the longevity of their tire, but tires are more of a personal opinion in the good old drift scene. It just kind of depends on what you like to run and what others will run for you. A lot of times people just buy a million of the same thing because they can buy more in bulk and get a little bit of a better deal. Coilovers with a higher spring rate than normal to minimize body roll but maximize inertia through turns is gonna be important. Fortunato coilovers and BC reign king in this department. Fortunato coilovers being rebuildable and adjustable over time, which means as you practice and get better, the coilover can evolve. Just like you, you little Pikachu. So what do you think? Are you up for drifting? Let us know your drifting story, whether it was legitimate or whether it involved you running into a mailbox and let us know in the comment section below so that we can either laugh with you, talk with you, or maybe just giggle over here. So whether that's a car that was meant to go sideways or not, we're completely impartial. Don't forget to subscribe as well. And if you're looking for wheels, tires, or suspension, be sure to check out fitmentindustries.com where we got it all, boys and girls. Fortunato, Enkis, Cosmos, Works, Nankinks, Atsus, it's a song. I'm Alex from Fitment Industries, and we will see you guys later. Peace.